I'm delighted to have the opportunity to speak to you about the work that we are starting to do in regards to creating dementia-friendly societies. Uh, the concept of dementia-friendly societies is a very simple one. It is about developing ways to promote social inclusion as well as awareness about dementia. It's where a society consciously acts to ensure that people with dementia are embraced into the community and their needs are addressed across the physical and the social environment. The idea is gaining international momentum with innovative work occurring in the United Kingdom and Belgium. I am pleased that we now have the resources in our organisation to start the implementation of the concept here in Australia. I think you've had enough of statistics today, but here are a few more. Uh, 320,000 Australians have dementia today. It's not a natural part of ageing, uh, even though the biggest risk factor for dementia is ageing. 24,000 people under the age of 65 have dementia, and about 30% of those over 85 have dementia. The rapidly ageing population means that we will have about 900,000 people with dementia by the middle of the century. I think the important thing for me to say is that dementia is not just a medical condition, it is also one that has profound social implications. People often associate dementia with memory changes and forget how it can affect behaviours, communication, relationships and the ability to undertake everyday tasks. We know from talking and listening to Australians living with dementia that social isolation and stigma are the two biggest challenges that they face in their everyday life. A study that we did last year showed that 60% of those surveyed indicated that if they had a diagnosis of dementia, they would feel a sense of shame. And nearly half said that they would be humiliated by having a diagnosis. Approximately one in five said that they would feel uncomfortable spending any time at all with a person who had dementia. I hope you'll agree that it's unacceptable in this century for a person to live in shame and to be isolated from their community purely because they have a medical diagnosis of dementia. In my view, promoting active social engagement in the community by people with dementia and their carers is the best way to ensure both a better understanding of dementia and to dispel some of the myths. I believe the experience and advice of people living with dementia is fundamental to the development of dementia-friendly communities in Australia. We now have a committee at the national level comprised purely of people with dementia whose task is to support this work. And I think it's worth recalling that it wasn't until 2000, even in our own organisation, that people with dementia self-advocated and spoke at conferences. So it's only in the last 12 years that people with dementia have actually been welcomed into our organisation, let alone the wider society. And that perhaps tells you something about how far we still have to go. We are committed to achieving social change by working with communities to listen to the needs of people with living with dementia, to hear their views about how communities and organisations can make their journey easier, to create opportunities to remain engaged within society and to contribute in a meaningful way. This is one of my favourite examples and if we could have five or six of these in every states of Australia, I would start to feel I was really achieving something. This is work of Life Care in South Australia. Life Care piloted the side-by-side -side program which supports people living with dementia to participate in the workforce at Bunnings. Each person living with dementia is supported to engage in work they are interested in with a workplace buddy. For me, creating dementia friends in the workplace, providing them with appropriate education and training, is a powerful strategy to help reduce some of the stigma that exists today in society. 
The words of the people with dementia involved in the project ex explained it better than perhaps I can. And I quote, I want to keep doing the things that are useful. Another quote, feeling of doing something worthwhile again. Another, having a sense of purpose in life. Another example of an organisation incorporating the needs of people with dementia and raising awareness is the National Gallery of Australia, who work in partnership with Alzheimer's Australia ACT. The gallery have developed a specialised programme to enable people living with dementia to enjoy the gallery with the support of Alzheimer's ACT staff and trained guides. And this programme, which has been going now, I think, for probably three or four years, is now being rolled out in other galleries across the country. And it's interesting that the, uh, the educators don't lecture people with dementia on what the paintings are about. They stand and wait for the people with dementia to make their observations about the painting and so promote social engagement in that kind of way. Alzheimer's Australia in WA has a program where they support people with dementia to volunteer in the community and are accompanied by a volunteer buddy. For example, one person with younger onset dementia helps out older people in his community with their gardens. He recently spoke about how the chance to connect with the people he is helping has made a huge difference in his life. In Alzheimer's Australia, we are very supportive of the still ticking men's group funded by the ACT government. We think it's a wonderful program for men with dementia. It's a program that enables the men to visit exhibitions, go on holidays, go to the beach, or go to the bush for lunch. The concept of dementia-friendly communities builds on these existing initiatives. I think the wonderful thing about today is that we've heard so much about things which, if replicated, could make so much difference to so many people's lives across Australia. We've produced two papers, and there'll be copies of some of them outside. One of them is Dementia-Friendly Societies, The Way Forward, which reports on some of the international um, knowledge on, on what's happening overseas. And the other one is called Cognitive Impairment Symbol, Creating Dementia-Friendly Societies, uh, Organisations. And one of our ambitions, for example, is that Centrelink uh, should become a dementia-friendly organisation. It's, it's very difficult for people with cognitive impairment and their carers who are under stress to get access to all the services they need from Centrelink. Uh, we've got a training program that we did for Centrelink some years ago and we're still hoping that that organisation will roll it out across Australia. I think it would make a huge amount of difference to many people's lives. There are so many other examples that I could cite. Walking groups, choirs, school programmes, visits to art galleries, workplace engagement programmes, community staff training, use of assistive technology, streetscapes. All these are building blocks of a dementia-friendly society. Perhaps the only other one I'd like to mention is transport, which has been the focus of some papers here today. For a person with dementia, the most traumatic uh, experience possibly is losing their driving license shortly after diagnosis. It's humiliating and for lifelong drivers, it means a loss of something that they value. How much worse to find that you can't use public transport or find taxi drivers or others who are unhelpful. We have a, a training program called Is It Dementia that's directed at retailers, bank staff, emergency services, taxi drivers and others, which helps them understand what communicating with people with dementia is all about. I encourage you to have a look at that program if you haven't seen it. It's at the isitdementia.org.au website and we'd be delighted if you use it free of charge. I'm pleased that just last month the New South Wales Government announced a rollout of dementia training for all of their transport staff based on this resource. So let me just conclude as I'm running out of time. The focus of this conference um, has been making societies age-friendly. I hope you'll embrace actively within that idea 
the notion of societies being dementia friendly too. I'd like to congratulate the ACT government on what they have done today. And I hope that all of you will work with us to help roll out dementia friendly societies and dementia friendly organizations over the next few years. Thank you very much.